Hello guys, this is Yuhan. And I'm Maya from M.Y Developers. We are here today to introduce to you our newest product, Corona Cider, an integrated development environment with visual debugging and simulator remote capability. Just to give you an idea of what you can do with it, we will show some examples using Cider. Now let's open up Cider. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is tell Cider the location of the Corona executable. To do this under Windows, you go to Tools, Options, you go under Corona Options, and for Mac, you just go to Cider Preferences and go to Corona Options and click on the Corona Simulator.exe. And for Mac, you click on Corona Terminal and then click Open and OK. Cider comes built in with a versioning system such as Git, SVN, and Mercurial. You will now automatically download a game example from a Git repository from the ANSCA site. So let's go to the ANSCA site here. And let's just go under the Ghost vs. Monster um, example. Click Download it from GitHub. And copy the .git URL. Now go to team git, and under git go to clone, and just paste in the .git URL, click next, check master, next, and give it a path, click finish, <coughs> and just wait for it to get all the files. And also, I'll click Open Project whenever it's done. And alternatively, you can create a new project by going to File, New Project. Or you can open an existing project. And also, a project is defined as any folder that contains a main.lua file. OK. So now that we have downloaded the Git repository, we can open main.lua by double-clicking on it on the Project Explorer. <coughs> by the way, you can also open project assets such as images directly from the IDE. If you right-click on some assets that are currently not supported in CIDR, such as sounds, it will give you the option of opening it in the system using your default program. Now, the only other thing you need to do to get started debugging is to include the CIDR debug library project file in your main.lua. Just type RCD and press tab in the first line of code in your main.lua. This will expand to require CIDR debugger. This is called a code template. We will show you more later in this tutorial. Also, uh, make sure to save these changes. Okay, now we are ready to start a debugging session. First, let's open up load main menu.lua. Next, set a breakpoint at the end of the function, new function, right here. To do this, simply left click on the line number on which you wish to set a breakpoint. Next, click on the debug button. You will see that the execution has stopped at our breakpoint, denoted by this green arrow. We can now view all variables in this context. So how can this speed up your development time? Say for example we wanted to know all information about the local group table. We would have to write a series of print statements to print out all the variables and find it in a sea of other debug statements. This can quickly get unmanageable. But with CIDR, however, variable inspection becomes trivial. Now, let's click on the Variables tab here in the editor. By the way, all these tabs are fully customizable. You can just move tabs around to wherever you wish, and if you have multiple monitors, you can drag them outside of the editor to another screen if you wish. If you accidentally close a window or somehow mess up the layout, you can just go to the Windows, Reset Windows, and you will get all your windows back. 
Okay, so now in the variables explorer, you can see all the variables currently in scope at the current line. Both global and local variables can be explored. Now let's start out by sorting everything by name. You can do this by clicking on the column header. It is generally a good practice to check your global variables from time to time to make sure you did not accidentally make something global which can lead to memory leaks. So the types of variables reported are display objects, display groups, boolean values, numbers, strings, tables, and functions, which are all denoted by special icons. If a variable has some members, such as tables and display groups, you can click on it to expand and see all of its members. This effectively replaces print statement debugging and saves you the time of having to find stuff in the terminal or creating artificial ways to pause the program. Since the execution of the program is currently paused, we can examine this for however long we wish. We do not need to we do not need this breakpoint anymore, so we can either disable it by clicking on it again, or if we would like to reuse the breakpoint at some other time, we can just uncheck it in the breakpoints tab. You can also double click on any breakpoint here to directly jump to that line in the editor. This is useful if you have many breakpoints split up over different files. We would also like to note that you can set and remove breakpoints as you wish before or even during execution. Okay, so another very useful set of features are the step commands. You can step into, step over, or step out of a function. The purpose of these functions are best illustrated by an example. First, let's stop the previous debugging session. Now let's set a breakpoint at a function call show loading screen. Now let's press the debug button. As you can see, a green arrow will show up indicating the current line of execution. Now let us click the step into button. You will notice we are now inside the function. Keep in mind that at any time you can look at the variables tab and watch their values evolve over each step. You can keep stepping through until the functions return or you can click the step out command and it will return to the previous function. Now let's click stop debugging. Now click start debugging. We must do all these steps because we are trying to debug a portion of code that only runs during startup and the only way to do that is to restart the program. Now this will take us to the same breakpoint. This time let's click the step over command. You will notice we have skipped the function. So another very useful feature is that you can pause and resume execution of a program at any time. Suppose your project has many different modules that you have just assembled together and there's an infinite loop somewhere in one of them. For example, let's introduce a bug in our, in in our initialization code. Let's go to main menu.lua and place an infinite loop here and click start debugging. So you'll see now that the program has hanged. We have dealt with this problem before, and the only way we could figure out how to narrow it down was to place a print statement after every require in your main.lua to isolate the problematic file. Now with CIDR, you can just pause execution, and it will take you to the exact line where the problem resides. We also included a code template feature that will save you a lot of time coding. Say for example you want to create a new rectangle on the screen. Instead of typing lots of boilerplate code such as display.newrect, just type dnr and then hit tab. The function will be filled in for you and you can tab through the parameters and set them to whatever you wish. Press enter when you're done. 
You can do this for all the display factory functions. For instance, if you wanted to create a new text object, instead of typing display new retina text, just type DNRT and hit tab. The code template will be activated. Say you wanted to add an event listener. Just type AEL, short for add event listener, and hit tab. And fill in what you wish. Also, setting reference points is easy. Just type SRP, hit tab, and fill out the display object name. Next, tap to the reference point, and for instance, if you want the top left reference point, type DTLRP and hit tab. Please also see the documentation for a complete shortcut list. Also, you will notice that there is a history tab with every document insider. This shows you all of the changes you have made and the time and date that you have made them. You can even revert files to previous dates. This is useful if your program stops working and you want to roll back to a previous time. So, so in addition to the powerful visual debugger, we also offer a simulator remote built into the IDE. Basically what this allows you to do is conveniently send device only commands such as accelerometer, gyroscope, compass, and hardware keys directly to your app without having to build for the device. The hardware keys generator in particular, especially the back button generator, is very useful for debugging Android menus. We found it very hard to debug event handling code on the device because the debug console was not readily accessible. Thankfully, you can now use CIDR to visually debug your event handlers. You can even set breakpoints inside the handlers. It will pause when the event is triggered. Now to demonstrate how to use the remote, let's get the Tilt Monster demo from GitHub. Let's go to ANSCA site again and scroll down to Tilt Monster. Here we go. Let's go to <coughs> download from GitHub. Copy the .git URL. Now let's go to team git clone, paste in our tilt monster URL, click next, click master, next. Click finish, wait for it to pull it down. Click Open Project when it's done. So after it's done, let's click right-click on Tilt Monster and click Select Main Project. You can only debug your main project. So let's require CIDR Debugger. Let's go to main.lua and type RCD for require CIDR debugger and press tab and it'll expand the code template and now let's go to the ultimote window here save this by the way let's go to the ultimote window here and just go to the accelerometer tab and click enable so now let's start the app by clicking on debug main project pull the ultimate window out of the IDE. Let's make this a little bit smaller so you can see it. And as you can see if you drag these oops if you, if you drag these sliders around you'll see the program responding. Oops not that good at this game by the way
Alright, so thank you for watching our short video tutorial and please download the cider from uh, the link below to try it for yourself. Alright guys, thanks for watching and feel free to ask any questions below.